The Connection Show, inspiring hope, health, healing. Sponsored by Brave Heart Workshops Live with Jill Reynolds. And joining me from San Marcos, California at the General Flynn Reawaken Conference is Laura Lynn Tyler Thompson from Canada. Welcome to the show, Laura Lynn. It is such an honor to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Well, we love to do things a little bit different at the Connection Show. We're not like the other podcasters here. So one of the things that we love to do is we believe that when Jesus walked the face of the earth, Laura Lynn, that he loved to do ministry sharing story, parables, and accounts. And through Jesus' ministry sharing parables, accounts, and stories, lives were transformed and people followed him. And we believe that when you hear someone else's story and the audience listens to that story and sees the similarities of your life with theirs instead of the differences, that's where true transformation begins. So with this, I'd like to invite you on a journey, if you're willing to go on a journey, to the times you were born, Laura Lynn, and what life was like as a little girl for you and share your childhood, the good, the bad, and the ugly, so that we can see what your life looked like and hopefully the audience might connect your life with theirs. And then we're gonna bring that forward to the amazing woman of God you've become today. That is so sweet. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> you no, didn't even warn me. <laughs> nobody is, and we don't. We don't like to show up with intention. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, interesting story. I was born a small uh, white child in Uganda, East Africa, and uh, my mom and dad were missionaries, and so I grew up there. Um, I grew up around extreme poverty, and so it was very interesting to me uh, to eventually, you know, eight years later, land up in Canada. Canada where there was a lot more stuff, you know, and it was important, you know, what brand of shoe you wore, what brand of clothing. So when I was little in Uganda, because we were around the very, um, you know, the, the very poorest of the poor, none of that was an issue. But Idi Amin was in place. Now, Idi Amin, if you remember his name at all, a very, very evil dictator. And uh, we have home video of him. And he came into power and basically became a tyrant and at the end of it about 500,000 of his own people died and so in 1973 my mom and dad being missionaries they knew that there was trouble a lot of my dad had gone down to a river nearby where there was bodies floating down the stream and um, they just didn't feel that they should leave they didn't feel that they should um, abandoned the people. And so in 1973, late one night, about 1130, the army guys came, they picked up my dad and they took him off and told my mom that she had basically, you know, 48 hours to get out of the country. So we did the fastest packing job of all time and, uh, got all our stuff together. And I didn't understand it cause I was only, I was almost eight years old. And I just knew my dad wasn't there. My mom didn't give us any drama about it. We had no idea. But all of a sudden, all the people from the surrounding areas and our church came and they, they came and rested on our front yard and they were just sobbing and weeping. And I knew that something was wrong. I just didn't quite know exactly what it was. My mom said we had to go and that because of the political climate, you know, that we would be meeting my dad in Kenya and, you know, everything's fine, kids, pack your bags. So my mom at that time, what I didn't know was she did not know whether my dad would be dead or alive. My dad had witnessed the murder of the mayor of our city just about four or five weeks before. He was the only white man in a crowd where the army hauled the mayor before because the mayor was uh, being like he was resisting so he they hauled the mayor in front of all the people of the town and slit his throat so when they did that of course it was to just uh put fear into the hearts of the people 
and my dad had witnessed it. And so some of our church members had been very concerned that my dad had seen that and that he was quite a visible minority in the crowd. And so life really changed. I, I thought that I would always be in Africa and all of a sudden, because that was the only home I'd ever known, I did not feel like home was Canada or home was the United States. My father was American, my mom was Canadian, so I've had dual citizenship. And that's been a real blessing. That's how I'm able to get down here because now Canada is basically being run by the tyrant. Now Canada has turned into a very dangerous place to live. We haven't been able to uh, go to the restaurant for months. I haven't been able to have a date with my husband. I haven't been able to um, go and enjoy a meal with friends because we're not vaccinated. So um, in Canada, a young person cannot go to university unless they're vaccinated. So they are now promising as of literally the last few days, and I believe because of the truckers convoy, they're promising that they're gonna reduce those uh, you know, mandates. But we have a lady, her name is Dr. Teresa Tam, and Dr. Teresa Tam is the uh, health officer for the nation, and she is from China, and she, I would have to say, does not uh, em embrace freedom. She has been doing nothing but pushing the vaccines and limiting any doctors being able to prescribe early treatment with the drugs that you and I both know about. Um, so all of my childhood, I think, led me to be where I am today. Also a lot of personal failure. I've written a book, it's called Relentless Redemption. And I've been through two divorces. But I ended up, I'm in my third wonderful marriage, and I just thank God for his forgiveness. I thank God for his kindness. Um, I wrote the book because I was in such shame over the loss of my first marriage that I did not know how I would ever recover. I felt that I had failed God so incredibly that he would never be able to forgive me or use me ever, ever again. And through that process of brokenness and shame, God revealed his power to me and it set me free. And that is how I speak today. That is how I am enabled to be strong and powerful in being one of the most outspoken broadcasters in Canada. Um, the Lord showed me that he loved me, that as far away as the East is from the West, that is how far he had removed my sin from me. And being raised in a missionary family, I thought that, that that was very good scriptures until I needed to apply it to my life, and I couldn't. I felt like my sin was huge, and I somehow made what Jesus did on the cross smaller. And that was a sin, too, because that was like pride. When you ever feel that you have failed so incredibly that what Jesus did on the cross is not enough to cover that sin— Imagine what you're doing. It's like saying, thanks for dying in that horrible way, but it just wasn't good enough. It just, it wasn't enough to save me. And that is a travesty to what God did. So I had a revelation back in 1996. I had a revelation of the love of God and that set me free. So in 1999, I got a call on my living room floor uh, I was folding laundry and I got, uh, uh, literally, the Lord, I've never had it happen since, you know, or before. Um, I was folding laundry and I felt the presence of God come in the room. And not in an audible voice, but, you know, the calling. Every one of you out there knows that moment where God calls you to something much bigger than yourself. I'm sure you've had that. Like, to be doing all that you're doing. At some point, God said, hey, I think it'd be a really good idea, Jill. If, if you, you know, do this work for me and spread the love of God and tell people about me. And we often just feel like we're not enough. And I felt that way. But I had had the revelation that Jesus loved me and he'd forgiven me. So I felt empowered by the forgiveness of God. And so when he called me to television, I heard him say, I want you to tell people about me on television. Now, I went to my mom. 
And I said, Mom, God has called me to TV. And it's the funniest thing. She is a, I'm telling you, uh, God bless her soul. She died about a year and a half ago. But uh, she's a woman of God. She's a woman of faith. She went to Uganda alone as a missionary woman originally until she met my dad. And then they went back together. Um, but she said to me when I, I told her, the Lord has given me a call and it's to, to be on television, tell people about Jesus. She said, don't give up your typing skills, dear. <laughs> and I realized. That's so funny. Yes. I realized that, you know, when God calls you, you kind of look crazy. Like people, even your own parents, even your own family might think you're kind of nuts. And I later found out like 15 years later, I found out that my own cousins when I told them, and they watched my kids for free because I didn't have enough money. I was going through my second divorce. I didn't have enough money for daycare or anything, but I said, God's called me to TV. They're like, oh my gosh, she's lost it. Later, they told me that the word that they used behind my back for me was delusional. Okay, so hold that a moment. Hold that a moment, okay? You're going to love this. <laughs> okay. So hold that delusional part, I call it part, and hold that shame part, okay? And let's take that for just a moment because this is going to transform your life. Yes. I swear this will transform yes. your life, okay? So when you take those parts and you truly understand the biblical verse that the Lord's given us, God's given us, that we will suffer four generations of curses and sins of our forefathers. So if you had that part of delusion and shame come into your spirit, then think back, okay, for yourself, Laura, think back to your mother and your father having delusion or shame in their lives. Then think back to your grandparents have delusion and shame in their lives and your great grandparents. So if you haven't done this, when you get home, we will do a burden release and I will show you how to take those two parts back four generations. And once we do this work, then God will show you, I mean, divine blessings that he would like to bring into your family, your great grandparents, your grandparents, your parents, even if they're past yourself and we can bring the blessing into your children and yes. their children's children yes. because God wants us to understand the curses see we think we have to just get rid of these parts like I got to get rid of this I got to get rid of it. I got to get rid of it. but he doesn't want us to get rid of get rid getting rid of them he wants us to meditate and look at those curses for the divine healing that he wants to give us because once we've invited Jesus into our lives and he resides in us, then we live because he lives. Yes. We have been resurrected because he's resurrected. Yes. And so if we've been resurrected and if we live because he lives in us, isn't it true that he wants us to take generational sins back to him, to the cross, so he can bless our family and our family's yes. family. And you know, when you speak of that, so the curse of divorce in my life, I realized came from my grandfather on my dad's side. He was, um, is it a bigamist? No, um, you know when you marry more than one person? Bigamist. A bigamist. Yep. I had a stepfather that was a bigamist. <laughs> yeah. So I, I get that yeah. part. So my grandma married him and didn't even know he'd been married before. And he ended up in his life, had five marriages. The summer I found out about all of that was the summer that my first marriage um, blew apart. And it was my fault. And so, so you're so right about all of that. And I've done a lot of work, um, although I'd, I'd still love to work it through with you. But um, I've done I, a I, I've done 40 years of recovery. So right. I'm, sh I'm sure we There's can both. <laughs> we can, I'm sure we can both help. I, believe it or not, I'm 68 years old. I've oh, been on this I journey a that. long time. Right. Oh, you look amazing. <laughs> wow. Um, well, you know, when we realize that the, the sins of our fathers are visited forward and that I didn't even know that the enemy would, would build in such a deception 
uh, to wound me, um, to try to destroy my destiny. Uh, but all I can say today is I wake up every day and my goal is for the enemy to go, oh, shoot, she's up. <laughs> and I, I live to walk with angels and to be a powerhouse of truth for the kingdom of God. And that is the destiny and the legacy that I now walk in, in spite of that shame. So in my book, Relentless Redemption, it's available on Amazon. Um, uh, I do work through like so much of that. And people have uh, written me and said that uh, they were, they just felt that it was over like for them until they read my book wow. and they realized what I went through. And I have the scriptures in there to set you free hundred mm -hmm. percent from all of this lie, the lies, the so lies what, of the what, enemy. So what is your website as well? If you have a it's website. It's lauralyn.tv, L-A-U-R-A-L-Y-N-N.tv. And uh, I just live to kick the, the devil in the butt, tell the truth, and rely on the Lord God's protection. And he has helped me. Um, and, and, you know, um, I live an extraordinary life, not because of anything I do, but because I trust him so much. When I had to go to such low levels um, of realizing what a failure I was, I was able, though, to receive that crown from him. I was able to receive the robe of righteousness that set me free. And so I operate with the robe of God's righteousness on me. Not my own righteousness, but God's righteousness. Amen. So I will uh, definitely uh, put down Laura Lynn's website on this um podcast and you can reach out to her and make sure you go to Amazon to pick up that book to be blessed. So thank you so much. I've had so much fun. Yeah, this thank is a you. different interview, isn't it? It is. Oh, you're, <laughs> you're, a, you're a blast. Thank you. Thank you. God bless thank everyone. You. God bless. Bye now.